Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord the praise he so richly and rightfully deserved. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. What a wonderful opportunity to be in the house of the Lord. And all that clapping you hear, we got a few of our sisters that are in the house for Women's Day. Amen. Amen. And we don't want to take for granted this wonderful opportunity uh, to share. And later on in the worship experience, I'll be talking more about our potential reentry. Good morning to all of those who are watching us this morning. If you're watching us on Facebook, YouTube, or engaging in our live chat room on our church website, welcome to St. Paul Online. Our digital ministers and social media influencers are ready to engage you this morning. So real quick, we want to invite you to share this experience with others. If you're watching us on Facebook, share on your personal timeline without starting a separate watch party. We want to make sure that we all stay in the same chat stream. Tag those you want to invite to this post. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We want to get it up to 1,500 before the summer is over. Text the link of this worship service to your personal network. And if you're in the chat room on our church website, click the invite button in your chat window to share this experience with others. Amen. And wherever you're watching us right now, let us know the city and state you're watching us in. And if you want to, take a selfie, post it on our social media website. Uh, Women are worth uh, chairperson. This is the Tiffany Hart. Tiffany Hargrave is going to come and give us our call to worship. And then um, after that, we will have our scripture and our prayer, and you all may be seated during that time. It's, we're doing things a whole lot different right now, so we're glad you all are in the house. So, Sister Tiffany, would you come and lead us as far as this worship experience is concerned? Good morning, St. Paul. Welcome to Women's Day 2021. Our call to worship is, Bless the Lord with all, all my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. For I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And now our hymn, Wonderful Words of Life.
Good morning. Okay, I'm looking in the chat window on, the, on, on YouTube, Facebook, and our church website. And I'm curious where everyone is watching from. So let us know what city and state. And our, our theme is, um, this is our exodus. And I just really feel like these verses of scripture are very, um, you know, they are just so befitting to our ex to our theme. This is our Exodus. And it's gonna be read I'm gonna be reading from Exodus chapter seven, verses one through five. Exodus chapter seven, verses one through five. And the word of God reads, And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God of Pharaoh I'm sorry, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron, thy brother, shall be thy prophet. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron, thy brother, shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the children of Israel out of his land. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that I may lay my hand upon Egypt and bring forth mine armies and my people and the, ch the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch forth mine hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. The word of God to the people of God. Praise be to God. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you as humble as we know how. Heavenly Father, the wild ministry and the disciples of St. Paul, thank you for this day. We thank you for everything that you have done because this is our exodus. Not just today, but every day after this, God. You have taken care of each and every one of us during this pandemic, God. We have not lacked for nothing, no food, no clothes, income coming from somewhere. God, you have been wonderful to us. And God, we thank you for being able to come into the house of the Lord today, God. This is our exodus every day after this day moving forward, God, because you have shown man that you still sit on the throne and you're looking down upon us. God, we welcome you in this service. You're in this service every Sunday when I look at it from home. And God, I thank you. You're already here. And God, you're going to do so much for us. You're showing your children how you brought the others over years ago. And you're bringing us over, God. If I can say this is our exodus, this is our exodus, we're going to exit out and we're going to come out on top, God. And I thank you for everything that you've done for St. Paul Baptist Church, our pastor, his family, all the social pastors, and the wild ministry, God, for being able to still go on strong in your name. Amen.
this morning amen yeah i don't know about you guys but it's good to have some fellow believers in the house to worship with me this morning it's good to hear his name be praised how wonderful how worthy it is god is amazing he is deserving of it all we thank him all day long but especially today when we're in the house of the lord amen especially today when we're here among our fellow brothers and sisters praising him together amen amen his name is worthy to be praised man it, man it is good to see you all wonderful ladies this morning in the house being able to worship this morning um, we praise God for you and I just wanted to say thank you for being here and for celebrating it gets rather lonely in the house you know on other Sundays so it's it's good to have some fellow fellow sisters in Christ with me here today Guys, this is a part of our service where we go into our impact moment. Now, our impact moment is uh, the children's message uh, that I get to do for the children and youth. Um, as a children and youth pastor, Reverend Peyton C. here at St. Paul. Now, this is for the kids and the kids at heart. I was talking with Miss Frankie before service. This is for the kids at heart, she said as well. Right, Miss Frankie? So, man, I, I encourage all of you to listen uh, to the message that I believe God has for our children and for all of us this morning. The title of this morning's message is one that I have encountered through recent example. It is called Obedience Training. Obedience Training. Our memory verse comes from James chapter 1, verse 22. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, which says this. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. The bottom line for this morning's message, guys, is listen and obey God. Listen and obey God. Let me emphasize that for us. Guys, this past week, uh, my wife Taylor and I, we got ourselves a very own dog. Oh, man. 
we took on the task of a medium-sized German shepherd named Leo, who is only a little around two years old. Now, we adopted him from a rescue group who was able to foster him after he was taken to a shelter by his previous owners who didn't want him, sadly. Now, already during the time that we've had Leo, I've realized that from the background that he's come from, from where we got him, and because he is so young, I've seen how much patience is needed when working with a dog who is around the age of a teenager in human years. Stubborn, stubborn, stubborn. For instance, just this morning, a very recent example, I came back in from taking Leo for his morning walk and from allowing him to go to the bathroom. We come back in um, to the apartment and Leo goes and grabs one of my Nike socks and he sticks it in his mouth. After I had taken him out, this is, this is how he does me? Oh my gosh. Taking one of my white Nike socks and I, we stand there for about 10 minutes with me holding on to the other end of the sock and saying, drop, drop, Leo, drop the sock. For 10 minutes, this went on. I repeated myself over 20 times. Taylor had to end up getting up because, man, she could hear that um, when she was sleeping. So she ended up getting up and coming to see what all this was about. You see, little commands like this are ones that young Leo is still learning, and we hope to have him in obedience training very soon. But even as as stubborn as Leo might be, I realize that there are times through my interactions with God that I'm in need of obedience training myself. (laughs) There are times where I need to listen and where God asks me numerous times to do what he wants me to do, and I'm willing to go the other way. You see, God knew that God knew that God knew there are things in my life that I might not have been ready for, where He's told me no or not yet, or He said, "Wait, Peyton, not right now." And there have been times where I've told Leo the same thing. See, he he has tried to listen to my commands, and he may hear me just fine, but he still doesn't obey me. Leo has somewhat of an excuse, though. I'd like to think, since he's still learning what to do, he's still a young pup. But for me, God's reminded me, I've been a Christian now for over 16 years. I should know what to do because I know his word, amen? I know what God says to do in his word, and yet sometimes I'm still willing to go my own way instead of trusting the God that has been with me for those 16 years that I've been a Christian. You see, we all do this sometimes too, don't we? Even if you aren't a follower of Jesus, we've all had our mom or dad or someone who has taken care of us that may have told us to do something, and we may have heard it, but we failed to follow through and to do it. We failed to obey. For Christians, we know what God's word says, but there are times where it's the last thing on our mind. When we want something and God says, wait, no, or not right now, we go on and take it for ourselves anyway. In moments like this, it's important, guys, that we remember and we, we, we recall what God's word says. We can't simply listen to what God has to say or what he says in his word and not do it. We have to do what our bottom line says. We have to listen and obey God. Again, James 1, says, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. You see, in this verse, James, the brother of Jesus, is writing this, and it's a truth that we have to live by as Christians. In this chapter, James has told fellow believers in God that he is writing to in this letter that they should be quick to listen to other people. They should be quick to listen and slow to get angry. He reminds them that in their listening, they shouldn't just be quick to listen to people, but even quicker to listen to God and accept his word into their lives. Well, we know that this is powerful, that Jesus is written about in God's word, and we're told to to listen and to think of what Jesus did for us, the awesome sacrifice that he paid for us on the cross. But James goes even further than just being knowing that we are saved by God. Man, we have to listen to what God also says now that we are saved. We have to obey him. We have to do what he says Because if we just read his word, but we don't apply it to our lives, James says we end up fooling ourselves. Now, how do we do this? You see, we can say that we want to be a Christian, and we can carry the name Jesus follower, but and we can tell ourselves that we believe in him, but if our lives don't show it, if they don't reflect that we are a Jesus follower, then we might as well be living two different lives, amen? I believe that's what James is telling us here. 
a life that wants to know God and another that doesn't want to follow through with it. When we do this, guys, we only fool ourselves because God doesn't want us to just obey, just, God wants us to obey him just like Jesus did. He wants us to live our lives for him so that we can become more and more like his son. Just like I see the best in Leo, my dog, I believe that God knows the kind of potential that he sees in us. He wants the best for us, and that means becoming more like Jesus Christ. We become more like him by obeying what God says and spending time with God to hear what he wants for our lives. In his word, God calls us to love everyone. We meet with the love that he has given us. He calls us also to love him also with everything we have and all that we are. He wants us to love doing what is right, to take care of the needy and the broken, to forgive others when they've done us wrong, and to show love even to the people that hate us. You see, there will be times when you don't quite know what God's will is for your life, but we recall these commands. There will be moments where for young believers out there where you don't know exactly what God wants you to do, but in those moments, we have to get alone with God in order to hear his voice best. I've learned that this is when Leo even listens to me the best, is when he and I are alone one-on-one -on -one, when there are no distractions, there are no loud noises around. And lastly, my kids, man, we are reminded by James at the end of the chapter that as we obey God, we will be given more freedom and we will be given rewards by our loving Heavenly Father. Man, this should give us some enticement, don't you think? More freedom because when we obey God, we are earning his trust. God will give us freedom to do things and more, responsi more responsibilities in our lives. But then he will also reward us too. He will reward us financially at times or he may give for us what we desire most because God knows that he can trust us and that we will do with what he has rewarded us. We will continue to reward, we will continue to give glory to him and praise him by the way we live our lives. So guys, I close this message out this morning by saying we can trust in God. We can trust God to follow through on what he says. God sending Jesus to die for us gives us just enough reason so I believe trust and obey him. Man, let's listen and obey. Listen and obey God. Will you close with me in prayer? Dear God, we remember this morning that we are called to listen and obey. God, you don't want us to just read your word and to go about and live our lives like we want to. God, we've put that behind us. Help us to follow you this morning, Lord. You have given your life for us. Help us to do the same and to give our lives for you, thinking about you every step of the way and thinking about how we can honor you by the way we live more and more. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you all. It's a pleasure being here this morning with you. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise at this time. It is a wonderful joy. It's a wonderful joy to see these many folks in church and it's not a funeral. Amen, amen, amen. It is a wonderful joy to see these many folks in church and it is not a funeral. Um, this is our women's weekend and we're certainly delighted and elated uh, to uh, have um, some of our sisters who have registered to be here with us this morning and it is a joy to see each and every one of you all many of you all I have not seen since last year since March the 12th and we thank God for your presence we've been going at this for almost 15 months and the Lord has been sustaining us as far as this moment is concerned so uh, I want to personally thank Sister Tiffany Hargrave as well as the leadership of the women of Worth. You all have put on an excellent, an excellent, excellent weekend and uh, I've been peeking in and out as far as your prayer call as well as the First Lady's tea on yesterday and um, it has been a wonderful, wonderful sharing. I'm just going to ask uh, that the leadership team of our women of Worth, would you all stand if you're here? And if you're not here, if you would, just wave to us on screen. Amen. 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 I am appreciative. I am appreciative of uh, your, uh, your um, 
sacrifice as far as your time and your diligence is concerned as far as that uh, this weekend is concerned. We're going to hear from our first lady uh, after uh, our preacher this morning. I'm going to let her have closing remarks before we have the benediction. Uh, but what I want to do at this time is to just make a couple of observations. Again, want to thank you all for joining us as far as our prayer call is concerned on this past weekend, on this past Wednesday. And we encourage you to join us at 8 o'clock on Wednesday night for prayer. Also, just want to remind you that the Deacon's Family Ministry Scholarship application for 2021-22 is available online. And if you're interested, contact Sister Pat, Deacon Pat Chambers at pattycake0812 at att.net or LaVon Sessoms at lses at hotmail.com for your application. And the deadline is June the 1st. Also, we're going to recognize graduates from high school, uh, community college, undergraduate and graduate degrees. Um, you can notify the church so you can be recognized by going to stpaul.church slash promotion. Deadline for submission is May 30th, 2021. And those who register will be recognized for Children's Day worship service on Sunday, June the 13th. And I believe that announcement really should be those who are, who are moving up as far as school is concerned. We also have graduate recognition for high school uh, associate undergrad and graduate degrees. Uh, you can notify the church at grad. The deadline for those submissions is June the 13th, and you will be recognized on the fourth Sunday, uh, June the 27th where we will have our Graduate Recognition Sunday. And our guest preacher for that day is gonna be the Reverend Dr. Brianna K. Parker, the CEO and founding curator of Black Millennial Cafe. Um, also, just wanna let you all know that we're going to have uh, a book club that will be taking place during the summer. The Debt Free Life Group will gather to learn and discuss behaviors, tools, and scriptures that will help us to identify financial vulnerabilities and break free from the oppression of debt. It's an interactive Bible study that will strengthen your ability to be confident and skillful stewards of God's gifts. Our facilitator is going to be Minister Erica Minor. The dates are going to be June the 15th, June, July 20th on Tuesday evenings from 6.30 p.m. to 8 o'clock. And you can register by going to St. Paul Baptist dot church slash small groups. So I wanted to um, share that with you all and of course put that as far as your uh, mind is concerned if you're interested in participating with that. I want to um, just take a moment to talk to you all real briefly and I want you to hear my heart about what is happening as far as the opening up um, the um, uh, mandates that the governor as well as the CDC has done as far as masks as well as gatherings are are concerned. And a friend of mine um, that pastors in Chicago, uh, Dr. L. Bernard Jakes, really blessed me as far as this sentiment is concerned. And, and I really want to share with you all how we're going to flow here at St. Paul. Is that all right? Because I know that it's a whole lot of folks itching to come back, and I'm itching to have you back, but I ain't itching that much. Because <laughs> I want us to do whatever we're going to do with a sense of diligence as well as your um, safety and security is concerned. And, and, and here's why I'm saying this. The uncertainty of what seems certain is, is why I am going to be very judicious in reopening our local church building. Um, when there are more legitimate questions uh, than questionable answers, I remain optimistically cautious. And so I'm asking that the disciples of St. Paul will remain diligent in protecting themselves. Wear your mask, continue to practice physical distancing, sanitize, wash your hands, etc., while we continue to practice patience as our um, re-entry team will have conversation about what our reopening is going to look like, as well as continue to bridge the phases as far as the state of North Carolina is concerned. I, I strongly believe that if you move too fast, it can result in some unnecessary consequences. 
And so we don't know what's going to be the consequences of the CDC as well as the president saying you don't have to wear your mask if you've been vaccinated. And we know that there are quite a few folks who have not been vaccinated. Amen. And so uh, since many people get disturbed if you ask them if they've been vaccinated or not, we're going to take our time. We're going to be back in here real soon where we will be able to worship God in spirit and in truth. But I want to lay this before you. Just because you've been vaccinated does not mean that there's a cure for COVID. Say it again, okay. Uh, let me say it again. Just because we've been vaccinated does not mean that there's a cure for COVID. You could still get COVID even though you're vaccinated. The, the, the blessing is that for those of us who have been fully vaccinated, COVID will not hit us as hard but it can hit you. And I don't know about anybody else, but I don't want COVID in any shape, form, or fashion, okay? Uh, and so we want to be very, very diligent as far as opening back up our space. Um, we are a long way from herd immunity. And so if, if you would allow for me as your pastor to guide us um, and, and wait a little longer that will prove to help us and not hurt us, okay? I'm, I'm deeply, deeply, deeply appreciative of how St. Paul has, over the last 15 months, been very supportive of what we've been doing as far as worship is concerned. And I trust that you will not lose your faith and your hope uh, until we open up. Um, I know that many people say, well, you know, there are other churches that are opening up. Why we can't do it? Because we ain't other churches. We're, we're St. Paul. I pastor one church, St. Paul Baptist. I don't pastor any other church. The Lord holds me accountable for the disciples here at St. Paul, not any other church. And, and one thing I've learned about patience is that it is earned, not given. So I, I ask that you all will remain patient with us. We're going to reopen soon. I promise we're going to reopen soon. It ain't going to be next Sunday, but we're going to reopen soon. And, and, and we want to be very diligent. And so on our reentry team, uh, particularly with the core, uh, I got medical personnel, uh, our board of directors, our deacons, and then we will have a larger committee that's going to include our ushers, uh, Christian Ed, uh, youth, all of our staff, uh, as well as anyone who has interaction with the public uh, so that we can make sure that whenever we do reopen, that we do it as safely and as soundly and we give one consistent, concise message to the public uh, and that we all be on, as Pentecost Sunday will uh, demonstrate, on one accord, speaking with one voice, speaking with one message. And so bear with us, please just for uh, over the next several weeks as we make sure that whatever we do when we reopen, that we would do it safely and securely. A am I all right with that? All right. Do me a favor, if, that, if, if I'm helping you with that, just send some hearts. If you're watching us on Facebook Live or YouTube, uh, let me know that I'm doing okay as far as this, this is concerned because we want to be diligent as far as these matters are concerned. That being said, uh, we're getting ready to, to move to a moment of prayer, and I want to lift up uh, several um, uh, concerns before you all, before I have Reverend Brenda Richardson to come and take us to the throne of God in grace. We want to lift up the family of Sister Deborah Harris, the sister of disciple Johnny Henderson, who's one of our deacons in training. Uh, her services are pending. We want to lift up the family of Brother Willie uh, Bolton, the brother-in-law of Sister Disciple Patricia Love. She's another one of our deacons in training. His viewing is Monday, May the 17th at 11, and the services are at noon, taking place at Alexander, Alexander Funeral Home. Then the family of Brother Robert McKinney, the son of Disciple Hazel Patterson. Uh, his viewing is Tuesday, May the 18th at noon. The services will be at 1, and this will be at Greer Funeral Home. We also want to lift up our families who are dealing with loss and grief, the family of Brother Bobby Ursary, the family of Disciple Chastity Stewart, the family of Sister Rosa McGuire, and the family of Brother Willie Garner Jr. Um, 
We also have persons that are on our sick and shut-in list that we want to lift up. Um, I believe that Sister Rhonda White, you'll be having surgery this week. Is one? Yeah, you'll be having surgery. We want to cover you in our prayers. Uh, she'll be having surgery this week um, on her rotator cuff so that when we start having choirs back in full, full on, she'll be able to move. Amen. 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 You won't be able to move for a while. You'll just be able to do that. I don't know if they know what that means. So uh, we want you to, we're going to pray that the doctors will uh, uh, do well as far as your surgery is concerned. We want to lift up Sister Bridget Truesdale, who will be having a procedure on Tuesday. Uh, Sean Crawford, Gina Pettis-Dean. We want to lift up our pastor emeritus, Reverend Dr. Paul Drummond, and his wife, Lady Thomasina. Uh, Brother Philip Dunstan and Brother Anthony Farr. We want to continue to lift those persons who are in uh, critical need of our prayers, as well as others that are on our sick and shut-in list. I'm going to ask that uh, Reverend Brenda Richardson will come, take us to the throne of grace, and um, we'll sense what heaven will do. Good morning, everybody. Let's just go ahead on it and pray about it, all right? Let's just pray about it. Father God, we thank you for this day. God, you have been our dwelling place. You have been our hiding place, Lord. And so we thank you for that. God, we just thank you for all that you are. You are an awesome, magnificent God. You hear our humble cry. So God, right now, we want to just say, Lord, that we ask you to forgive us of all sin, of omission, commission, anything that would keep you from hearing us this morning, God. We pray that you would just forgive us for all sin. God, we thank you for being an everlasting God. We thank you for being that God that sees us and hears us in the morning and in the midnight hour. So God, we call on some names, God. You heard them all. God, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that you would go into every sick situation, that you would touch everybody, God. Heal them in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. God, hold their hands, God. Hold the hand of that caretaker that doesn't know what to do in the middle of the night. God, hold the hand of the children that are by the bedside of their father or their mother. God, let them know that everything is going to be all right. You are healing God. You can comfort God. So God, right now we pray that you go into the rest homes and into every situation. And God, I pray that you give us the very best care. Give us excellent patients, excellent doctors, God. Let everyone that touches anyone that is having surgery this week be overqualified for the position that they have. That they can put healing hands, skilled hands, in that surgical operation. God, touch them in a mighty, mighty way. God, I pray for recovery. I pray that we will be kind to everyone that is going through. God, because in a minute, we might be going through too. So God, touch right now. Give us kindness. Give us the ear to hear our brothers and sisters. Give us a heart to love them. God, to truly, truly love them. God, we thank you for this day. This day is set aside for women. And God, we pray right now that you will bless every woman under the sound of my voice. Give them all of the desires of their heart. Bless them in a mighty, mighty way. If they need anything, all the word says, all you have to do is ask. We are the apple of his eye. So God, bless as only you can. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this moment. We bless our pastor, God, in a mighty, mighty way. We have heard the clarion call of his vision. We've heard it, and we receive it. We follow his direction. God, we pray mightily for our speaker, our preacher for today. God, bless her, and, we, and just, just dip her down, God, and then recover her when she pours out to us. God, we love you. Oh, we're so excited about your word, and we're so excited about even being here in the sanctuary. So, God, we thank you even now for that. God bless as only you can. Church, everything that is operation today. God, it really is all about you. It is all about you. We honor you and we glorify your name. It is in your name that we do pray. Amen. Amen. If you receive that prayer, can you give God praise at this time? Oh, I think we could do a whole lot better than that. We could do a whole lot better than that. 
Amen. Amen. Beloved, it is time to give. 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 And um, this is how we're going to flow for those that are in-house. And um, we're going to share with you as far as the giving mechanisms here at, at St. Paul. There are three ways you could give here at St. Paul. The first one is by either dropping off your uh, check, cash, or money order here at the church during the week. Um, call the church to make sure that someone is here at 704-334-5309, and you can drop that, uh, your uh, offering off during that time. The second way you can give is by either uh, going to our website and going through either ACS or Church Life, and you can give in that manner. The third way you can give is by um, uh, through the app called Givelify. You can download that app to your smart device and uh, give as far as that's concerned. For those that are here right now, if you have a physical offering, come on down to the front, come on down to the front. If you have a physical offering, we're not gonna pass the basket, but if you have a physical offering, uh, I'm gonna give you the opportunity to bring your offering after I lift up the prayer, okay? And so you can bring your offering at that particular time, all right? So if you would, for those that uh, have your offering, um, if you would, with your right hand, if you're able, lift it up to the heavens. We wanna give God what's right and not what's left. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we come and we thank you for the wonderful opportunity to partner with you in giving. And as we give right now, God, we don't take this for granted. We are most like you when we give. And so, Lord, if you would, bless these gifts of ours. Allow for it to continue to help us do your ministry and your work in this world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Just want to remind you that we're asking all the women who can to give at least $100 for Women's Day. The men that want to join can give $50. I am giving $100 because uh, I'm ex-officio chair of all ministries. And so I'm joining our sisters as far as giving is concerned. For those who have physical gifts, if you want to, you can bring them right now. You can bring them right now. Amen. You can bring those gifts right now. And I'm getting ready to make preparation to introduce our preacher for this moment. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The majority of us have probably given online. And so we want to thank you all for your gifts. Thank you so very, very much. Again, this is the first time that we've had these many folks in our church for worship service since March the 12th. And you all have been so gracious and so faithful. Thank you all so, so very, very much. It is a joy. It is a joy to introduce our preacher for Women's Day. Um, she is... First of all, one of the most powerful sisters that I know, and the Lord has allowed for her to do a lot of things that are inside of the church as well as outside of the church. She is not only a national preacher, but an international influencer, third generation of black female business owner. She's a communication expert. She is a diplomat, and she is a faith leader. She, is, she has the title, Honorable Dr. Susan Johnson Cook. Uh, she was the first black woman in 200 year history of the American Baptist churches to be elected to the senior pastorate of Mariner's Temple Baptist Church in New York, where she served that congregation for 15 years and grew it to over a thousand uh, uh, congregants. She had um, a major ministry called Lunch Hour of Power and Wonderful Wall Street Wednesdays. Um, she has been blessed to serve uh, under President Barack Obama as the International Ambassador for Religious Affairs. And she served during his tenure. And so we are definitely honored and delighted to, to have someone of that magnitude and that stature to be with us. Um, even more important than that, she is the first and only female president of the historic Hampton University Ministers Conference. Amen. The largest, the largest African-American um, gathering of clergy in the world. And she has served as a pastor for over 32 years of three New York 
uh, city congregations. She has also been on tour with uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes uh, in his tour, God's Leading Ladies. Um, she's just done a lot of wonderful things. She is a civil rights, a gender rights, a human rights activist. Uh, she officiated the funeral of uh, the late uh, Coretta Scott King. Uh, she has addressed the United Nations, uh, the UN General Assembly, the UN in Geneva. Uh, she's a bad sister. She's a bad sister. And I'm glad to call her sister and friend. And of course, she is a published author as well. And she has brought three of her books uh, with, with, her, with her. And I just want to share uh, The Sister's Guide to Survive and Thrive in Ministry. Uh, Too Blessed to Be Stressed, Words of Wisdom for Women on the Move. And then a devotional book, Sisters to Sisters. And of course, we have those books uh, in place, too blessed to be stressed. It's twelve ninety nine. We have twenty seven copies. Sisters of Sisters Devotion from African American Women. We have twenty seven copies. And then Sisters Guide and and to Survive and Thrive in Ministry. We have fourteen copies. Um, too blessed to be stressed is twelve ninety nine. Sister the Sister Devotion is eleven dollars. And then the Sisters Guide to Survive and Thrive in Ministry is fourteen dollars. It's available for purchase online. Links have been provided in the chat box on the platform that you're using if you're watching us online, uh, and we will get those books to you. If you're here in the sanctuary, I believe that we will have some opportunity for you that if you want to get that book, uh, we, you can purchase it today as far as um, this gathering is concerned. And what I want to do is take the four books as far as the Sisters Guide and to Survive and Thrive in Ministry, and I want to give that to some of our sisters in ministry uh, who are here right now. So I'm going to gift that uh, to you all as far as that's concerned. Do me a favor, if you would, wherever you are right now, I want you to stretch forth your right hand. Uh, for those that are watching us online or on your computer, stretch it toward your computer. Those in the house, stretch it toward Dr. Susan Johnson Cook and repeat after me. Dr. Sue J, preach the word. Dr. Sue J, preach the word. Let the Holy Ghost have her way. Preach, preach. Now, if you need a word from heaven today, holla back at her. Preach. Amen. Amen. After um, our women's ensemble blesses us, the next voice you will hear will be that of my sister and my friend, the Reverend Dr. Susan Johnson Cook, whom we affectionately call Dr. Sue J. Pray for her and with her that the Lord will use her in a mighty and a magnificent way.
by his word. If God said it, I believe it. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will praise him and magnify. Him. Is there anyone here who will magnify the Lord with me today? Can we exalt his name together? What's his name today? There's power in his name. What's his name? There's healing in his name. What's his name? Jesus. Joy just in the name of Jesus. Praise God. I was glad when they said, let's go to the house of the Lord. Good morning to your pastor, a champion for Jesus Christ, one who has led with so much fervor. He has wowed us. I know this is the Wow Women's Weekend, but he has wowed us with his leadership. Can we just praise God for the leader of this church? Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your friendship. Just driving around Central Square, amen. And just coming into this place and spending the weekend with him. Thank you for your generosity, for your hospitality. And beside every king, there is a queen. Amen. I know we in the queen city of Charlotte, but let's give it up for the queen, First Lady Pierre. Come on, let's give it up for First Lady Pierre. Thank you so much for your elegance and your eloquence and your ladiness. Amen. We praise God. And there can't be a queen without a princess. Amen. Let's give it up for Princess Charis. Come on. Amen. You're not only going to soar, you're going to surge. Amen. And we praise God for the time we spent together for Doc Deborah Dalton, who is just executed with excellence. Amen. Everything I've needed, she has more than provided. And to Lady Tiffany and to the WOW leadership, God bless you for your labors of love. It was excellent having to be together with you and for this wonderful praise team and music ministry. We praise God for you, for all the clergy. Thank you for that powerful prayer for the clergy here in the pulpit and in the pews. To my good friend, Reverend Valerie Williams, we praise God for you. And you know, there was this uh, question in the Bible when they were talking about a small town, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And we got the King of Kings from there, amen. Well, my summers were spent here in Concord, North Carolina, in Monroe with my maternal grandmother. And in that house, she raised me and my older cousin. And he married, and they just had a son who last week from Concord, North Carolina, was signed with the New York Jets, amen. So he's the first professional athlete in our family, and his mom is here today, my cousin Tanya. Why don't you just stand? Why don't you see the mama of the athlete, amen. And we are so excited, excited. So I bring you greetings from all, we're the Fisher clan with the family name, but I'm the Johnson Cook family, and we've got two BMWs in our household, two black men working, hallelujah, amen. One will be 26 tomorrow, and the other is 28, and he's with me enjoying the Queens town, amen. But we praise God, he's an internal resident, and he begins at Morehouse in a couple of weeks, and so we're just excited how God has blessed our family. So we bring you greetings from the Johnson Cook clan, and we bring you greetings from the village of Harlem, New York, amen. The village of Harlem, my hometown, so we praise God. Thank you so much for the invitation. I have just been so blessed by being here with you. And for those on the screen, how you doing? Amen. It's good to see you. You can go like this. We can't hear you clap, but you can go like this. And that lets me know that something's happening. Amen. And we praise God from whom all blessings are. I'm also glad because I don't know about y'all, but this was the first weekend I put on a dress in a year. Amen. So, how many Zoom people up in here know you had it all right from here on up, but down there, come on now, how many pajama sisters do I have? How many shorts people do you have? Amen. I had a bathing suit on one time. They didn't know, but it was all right. So, I was glad to have my cousin to help me zip this dress up, because I gained all 19 pounds of COVID-19. Amen. So we praise God from whom all blessings flow. And to the mothers of the church and to the elders, both here and visually joining us, 
anyone who's 70 and older who's able to stand, will you stand if you're in the sanctuary and if you're at home, just raise your hand. We want to bless God for you. Bless God for you. Thank you for blazing the trails that we now walk on. Thank you. Thank you for you. And all the officers of the church, thank you for your leadership and embracing such a wonderful past. Everyone who's picked me up said, you know, we have a great leader. And I said, yes, you do. Amen. And that's the kind of ministry we want. So we used to ask people who were 65 and older to stand, but I've gotten so close to that number, I got to put it up a little bit. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody got your AARP card? Amen. So I got a little pink card in the mailbox said that your next birthday you can get Medicare. I said, Lord Jesus, when did this happen? So uh, I'm just glad to be alive in the land of the living. Amen. Praise God. And we send our condolences certainly to so many families who lost loved ones during this season, both here and all around the world. So we praise God for you. So won't you take the hand of the, well, no, you can't do that. Just, just let's pray. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together and give God the glory and the honor. Thank you, Lord, for one more day. Thank you, Lord, that we're back together again in your name. Some here, some digitally, but God, we've come to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you for this wow weekend. You have wowed us over and over again, miracle after miracle, saving us after saving us. We thank you, God, for another chance. Now, God, bless this preaching moment as only you can. May you get all the glory and the honor. Bless this pastor and this people, God, who you have blessed so much at St. Paul's. Continue to anoint and appoint and assign and use them to the glory of God. This is our prayer in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. And those who love the Lord said amen, amen, and hallelujah. This is still our exodus. And I've enjoyed the chapters that you read both yesterday and today. And I want to take you a little farther into the Old Testament. If you'll turn with me to the book of Numbers, the 27th chapter. When you find it, say amen. If you need more time, say need more time. If you don't know where it is, say Bible study. (laughs) Amen. And I want to turn with you to the 27th chapter, a few of those verses, and hear now God's word. Then came the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Hepher, the son of Gilead, the son of Maker, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, and these are the names of his daughters. Mala, Noah, and Hogla, and Milcah, and Tirzah. And they stood before Moses, and before Eliezer the priest, and before the princes and all the congregation, say all the congregation, by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah. But he died in his own sin and had no sons. They had no sons. Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family? Because he hath no son. Give unto us, therefore, a possession among the brethren of our own father. And Moses brought their cause before the Lord. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. Thou shalt surely, say surely, give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren. And thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. For a few moments this morning, now soon afternoon, we want to preach on the theme, It's our time and it's our turn. And you can make it even personal. It's my time. And it's my turn. Now, if y'all say amen every now and then, we'll get out of here on Sunday. Amen? But I'm a good Baptist preacher. I know about Wednesday night Bible study. We can be here. Amen? So can I get an amen up in here? Praise God. It's my time and it's my turn. Today's text finds us 
in this book of Numbers. It is the fourth book of Moses, of the Pentateuch. This, the Israelites are still wandering. They are still in their exodus. They have deported Sinai. They have crossed the Red Sea. And now it's time for the numbering of the tribes. It's time for them to have an accounting of who's still with us at this part of the journey. And you know, life is a journey. And we're going to have to do an accounting after COVID. Who's still with us after COVID? And so life is a journey. Sometimes my sons, those two BMWs will say, Mom, you a trip. I said, no, I'm the whole journey, baby. You got me and I got you. Here they are on this journey. And they're going towards the promised land. Haven't reached Canaan. And you will remember it was a journey that should have taken only 11 days. But it took 40 years. 40 is an interesting number. This is the 40th year since I've been licensed to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when you look back over four decades, God's been good. But here they are in the wilderness, and they are still not rejoicing, but they are complaining, and they're still pointing out the problems. And so God said, I got to take you a little longer to let you know that I am God. And so here they are on this point of the journey. And as this text begins to unfold, something unusual happens. Because instead of the first names being called being men, it said, then came the daughters of Zelephadad. Uh -huh. Women were mentioned first. God pivots, if you will, from the normal practices and the announcements and the pronouncements of the men. And he names five women who are the descendants of men, but there are five women called the daughters of Zelephadad or D-O-Z. Not Delta Omicron Zeta. Now I'm a Delta. Come on, somebody. But these are the daughters of Zelephadad. Mala, Noah, Milka, Tirza, and Hokla. These are women early in the history of the Bible, and they are now becoming my biblical sheroes, the daughters of Zelephadad. Daughters of Zelephadad. Zelephadad was a son, but he had no sons. And so as Zelephadad left the village, he and a lot of the men of the village died. We know something about having villages with not a lot of men in there. And so the men died, but nobody had ever raised the question, what happens when the father dies and there is no son? See, sons were important to the legacy. Poor, sons were important to the inheritance because when the Cadillac and the cattle and the cows and the condos were all given away, they were always given to the son. Boy children were celebrated, but girl children were just tolerated. But here now are five daughters, and their dad is gone, and there are no brothers, and nobody had ever asked what happens when the father dies and there are no sons. That is, no one ever asked until these five strong sisters came on the scene. Come on, somebody. Like Alicia Key says, these girls were on fire. So these are really my first biblical sheroes. Yeah, I like Deborah. She's a professional woman like I am. She's a wild woman. She's a prophetess. She's married, and I like her, but she doesn't come to later in Judges. I like Lydia, the seller of purple. You know, she comes in the New Testament. You know, Pastor said I'm a third-generation black woman business owner. I like her. I love Mary because she carried Jesus. And I even like Elizabeth because she had been overlooked by society. But God said, I'm going to let you carry John. Come on, somebody. But these women, everyday women, who had been there through thick and thin, who nobody had ever recognized, these were the daughters of Zelephidat. And they now come on the scene and they take center stage. Wow, women. Give us our father's inheritance. Why should our dad's name be done away with just because he has no sons? No, our dad was an honorable man. He died like some of the men, but he didn't die with Korah. He died loving God with all his heart and soul, and we are his descendants. And so give to us our inheritance. And so they took it to Moses and to the princes, and they stood before them and all the congregation. Understanding protocol, understanding who to call. And they said, we want to do what's right. And Moses, being God's leader, took it to God. And God said, surely, 
Give them their father's inheritance, male or female. I created them. Give them what's theirs. They even changed the law books. God can make a miracle out of anything. Can I get a witness up in it? Change the law so whoever comes before you, male or female, give them their daddy's inheritance. I, I like this story. They were bold. They were, they were brave. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. And so I learned some lessons from this story. The first lesson I learned is God has prepared you for every moment you shall face in your life. Even the things you call failure, God uses for his good. Come on, somebody. God says, I'll take you from where you were and I'll put you where I want you to be. We can learn something from every lesson in our story. And they had faith over fear. You remember Hebrews says, now faith is the substance of things you're hoping for. So you got to allow your faith to direct you and not your fear. Can I get a witness, somebody? Say faith over fear. Well, the other thing I learned is when it's your time and it's your turn, God will orchestrate the season and get the season ready for you and you ready for the season. Come on, somebody. Ecclesiastes says to everything there's a season and a time for every matter under heaven. That's why we don't want our little girls wearing makeup too soon. It's not their season to be women. Come on, somebody. Don't be grown. Be a little girl. Play with some dolls. Do some stuff. But at the same token, we don't want our elders wearing mini skirts. That season is over. Slap somebody high five. Say, I had my turn. I had my time. Yes, I did. Y'all ain't got to say amen, but I know that's right. You may have had legs before, but they look like chitlins. Cover them up. Cover them up. Get you a lap cloth. Come on, somebody. Turn and tell somebody, stay in your season. Stay in your season. But the other lesson I learned is that blessings are not just for one gender. God said, I want to bless you. He said, the Lord is blessing you right now. Woke you up this morning. Started you on your way. Does anybody know that you're a blessed somebody in here? Joel Osteen says, bountiful blessings. I say, didymus, didymus, dynamite blessings God has for you. God supersized my blessings and minimized my pain. But the next lesson I understood is that God's got plans for you. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, God's got plans for you. Not for you to be defeated, but for you to prosper. Turn to tell somebody, it's my time and it's my turn to prosper. Say it to yourself. Said David had to encourage himself in the Lord. It's my time to prosper, not to be defeated. We've been down long enough as a country. That's why Donella Frazier holding that video camera in front of everybody said, I want the world to see what we've been seeing all along. We've had it as black women all along, as black men. We know what racism is like. But God said, right now I'm bringing you out. Turn to tell somebody, it's my time and it's my turn. But this is the next lesson I learned. They had been sitting on the sidelines all of their life. Like children, they were told, you just be there, be still, and don't say nothing. But the sidelines is where you learn the game. Oh, yeah. See, I'm, I'm, I'm a pre-Title IX athlete. So that meant that they didn't have scholarships for girls to go to college with sports but I love basketball, say amen. I've been 5'10 all of my life. I had to play something, amen. So I used to play b-ball, b-ball. And so I used to sit on the sidelines down at Malali Park. I lived in Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, New York. And I used to sit on the sidelines. And then one day, Peppy and Jerry and all of them said, Susie, you've been sitting on the sidelines all this time. You want to play this game? Get in the game. And they threw me the ball. And I got to that half court and I made a three pointer. Slap somebody high five and said, Yeah, she got game. She got game. Because I had been watching their moves. I knew how to move it behind my back and I knew how to take a jump shot and I knew how to dribble. And the sidelines is where you learn the game. These sisters said, We've been sitting on the side a long time saying nothing. But here we are understanding that this is our time and our turn. And they learned that timing is important. Had they moved a week earlier, they would have been too soon. Had they moved a week later, they would have missed their moment. You got to be at the right time and the right turn. We were at dinner last night. We were talking about Tiffany Haddish and Andre Day, who's now become a star. And she's one of my sorors, our Delta sisters. And just about two years ago, nobody really knew her name. She had a beautiful voice even then. 
But then and she met Stevie Wonder and somebody was supposed to make another introduction for her. She tells this story, but they waited on it a year. Had they introduced her a year before, maybe it would not have happened that she would have been taken for that lead role now in the Billie Holiday story. But here she was, ready for her moment. You got to be ready when your moment comes. Turn and tell somebody, be ready when your moment comes. Ah, but the next lesson I understand is that they knew their history. They said, look, we, we know who our daddy is. We know our lineage. We know he comes from Joseph and Manasseh. He comes from a great line of men, but we are his daughters. We, we know his history. We know when he left the village, and we know what, what happened when he died. And so we are the descendants of a great man. Um, I'm a descendant of great parents, and I know my history. So my parents used to send us down, I told you, to Concord and Monroe every summer. This is how it would go down. School would be over June 30th, the last day of June in New York City. No matter what day June 30th fell on, that was our last day of school. They would have our bags packed for us to come to Monroe on Trailways or Greyhound. I was a trailways where they leave the driving to us, so we were on trailways. The last day of school, we'd have a party. And it was the last day, we would have books back then, we had books back then, and we'd have to turn the books in. We used to sometimes have book covers, but sometimes we had just brown paper bags on our books. Come on, somebody, so don't act like y'all always had digital video. So we turned the books in, and then it'd be time for the party. So we, this is where children's diabetes really got started. We'd have cupcakes, M&Ms, Hawaiian punch, yodels, come on, with the little cream inside the cupcake, and potato chips. And then we'd be on a sugar high. So we had a little record player, and the teacher say, who wants to do the talent show? We had a little record player, and it had a little arm on it, and then you'd have to put a dime on it. So the needle was, oh, come on, somebody. Don't act like y'all never partied before. I'm from New York City, the party town. Some of y'all slid to the left Friday night. All got asked on Sunday morning to slide to the right. Two times, everybody. Oh, okay, y'all gonna front on me. Okay, okay, okay. So we put the little needle on the record player so it wouldn't skip, and we put on Motown. It used to be a little 45 with Motown in the middle and had a little disc in the middle of that. Come on. So first we put on Michael Jackson. We had these Apple Jacks and we sing I Want You Back. Then we put on Diana Ross and the Supremes. Guess who was Diana Ross? Stop. In the name of love. Before you, think it over. Hasn't God been good to you? So we go home. Parents would have, we didn't have rolling suitcases back then. They would really have cardboard. And our clothes would be all ironed for the summer. And they send us down to our maternal grandmother in Monroe. Well, my maternal grandmother and all her sisters be waiting there to take us to Concord. She had another sister we call Pet. And beside her had another sister who was Aunt Miss. Now, Aunt Miss was a snuff-dipping aunt and she had whiskers. <laughs> and the snuff would get stuck in her whiskers and drip down her chin. And they say, go on and give a miss a kiss. No! This is post-traumatic stress for a kid. And then we had three cousins. They all had double names, Annie Bell and maybe Boo. And then the third one, they said, you can't play with her. She's a little special. You can't play with her this summer. And we'd get in the truck, and we'd ride to Concord, North Carolina. Everybody be sitting on the porch, uncles and aunts, sitting on the porch, rocking, ask the same question every summer. Hey, Susie, how long you going to stay? The whole summer, like I do every summer. How's Ron? How's your mom and daddy? They're fine. So I used to, and then they have this um, sweet tea and they pour about a five pound bag of sugar in the sweet tea. I used to think they were rocking because it was a rocking chair. They were rocking because they want a sugar high. I was like, okay. Then we go inside and there'd be a black and white TV, nine inch. Star Spangled Banner would come on. Come on, y'all know at nine o'clock, the flag would fly 
And so it was black and white. So every year we were there, Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz would come on. But they had gone to the TV store and got this plastic thing with red and yellow and green, and they put it over there so we thought it was a color TV. Didn't know it was black and white. We were the remote control as they get up and change the channel. Come on, somebody. But we had the best fried chicken on the ride down. Then they take the foil from the fried chicken and put it on a hanger. And that was our antenna. Oh, come on, somebody here knows what I'm talking about. You didn't have a big old flat screen, but those were the best days. And so from Monday through Saturday, we could run through the streets. We had to get all the ironing and the cooking done on Saturday because nobody did it on Sunday. And then we go to the other side of the tracks, the Blacks Memorial Presbyterian Church. And that's when we start singing the songs. The mother in the back of the church would say, I come to the garden alone. While the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear calling on my ear, the son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with, and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there. None other has ever known. So they wanted us to know our history. We were northerners, New Yorkers, a fair city, a secular city. We went to church, but they wanted us to get the grounding of our grandmother where we would know how to do some chores and have to do some dishes. You didn't talk back back then. Come on, somebody. You didn't say nothing but yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. They wanted us to have the grounding of our culture and to know that we were a black people with dignity and pride. They wanted us to know our history, that we were Johnson Cook Fishers, and that as we walked out that door, the way we walked out was the way we better come back in that house. Come on, somebody. You couldn't hike your skirt up. You better keep that skirt down because we were somebody. Fast forward, you know, I worked for two presidents of the United States. My parents began as sharecroppers in those same fields where we used to visit in Monroe and Concord, North Carolina, picking cotton and tobacco in the hot blazing sun. Some of y'all picked some, or your descendants did. Hot blazing sun. The only way out of the fields for a woman back then was either to become a nurse or a teacher. Somehow my mother made it up to Fairfield State Teachers College. And she would type for the president by day and take her classes by night. That was the way she paid her tuition. And she'd come back to those fields where her cousins were. The blazing sun picking cotton and one by one she would teach them in a one room schoolhouse till everybody got out the fields and got the high school diploma. Then she moved to New York, met my dad. They, they met, they married, they worked hard, they built a business. And she would come back and send us back so we'd know where we came from. So we'd know our history. Well, here I come working for two presidents of the United States. And then I get to fly on Air Force One with President Clinton. Come on, somebody. Sitting on Air Force One. Now, let, now these were a whole lot of black cabinet secretaries at that time. There was Alexis Herman and Ron Brown. And so in, in the Air Force One, they had a, a boardroom. They had a boardroom on the plane. And so he asked some of us who were not on his cabinet if we'd step outside for a minute and then come back in. And then it was time for meal time. Oh, man, we had these tables about the size of this pulpit. And I said, oh, my goodness. They had other folks, the other folks from the other race serving us, and they had little napkins across their arm. They said, what would you like? We're serving barbecue ribs, beans, and coleslaw. I said, I want all of it. I said, everything. I said, but I got to watch how the president eats his ribs. <laughs> you know, you got to watch when you're in new company. He picked up his rib with his hands. I said, that's my kind of president. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I want to eat it. So my brother had this little white telephone in between the things. And so they said, you can call anybody you want to call. I said, no, you try to act like you've been there before. No, thank you. Well, the president left the room. I picked up the phone. I was like, mommy, do you know where I am? My brother's from the hood. He said, girl, you're on Air Force One. Take everything they got, everything they got. So I went in the bathroom. I got combs and toothbrushes and toothpaste. I was like stuffing it in. Secret Service said, how are you, ma'am? I said, I'm fine. Thank you. I'm fine. But here my mother and father who were sharecroppers, who never thought there'd be a black president in the White House, but never thought their daughter could walk in the front door of the White House. They had to use an outhouse and their daughter could walk in the front door of the White House. Now they got a black woman with an office in the White House. Come on, somebody. 
but know our history. What a mighty God we serve. Took these five women who nobody knew their name, places them in the annals of biblical history, says, I want you to know their names, Mola and Hogla and Milka and Tirza. I want you to know who they are. And what God is saying to you today, it's your time and your turn as well. Our parents did what they had to do, but we got to do something right now. They did more with nothing than we do with a whole lot of something. We got to be somebody. Wow, women. Everything we do, everything we touch, we should do by assignment in the power of the Lord, by the power of his might. Say, God, thank you for one more day. Thank you for creating me, woman. Thank you for making it our time and our turn. Thank you, God, for who I am and for whose I am. Thank you, God. When I think and I look back over my life and I think things over, I realize I've got a testimony. Yes, there have been tests, but there's now a testimony. So I've had some hills to climb, but I won't complain. Has God been good to somebody up in here? Has God blessed somebody? Does anybody know if it had not been for the Lord on your side, where would you be? Come on, I'm going to go a little to New York with you. So come on, wave your hands in the air. Just wave them like you just don't care. If you love the Lord and you feel all right, let me hear you say, oh, yeah. Yeah, you want to scream too? Amen. As we stand all over the church, if you're able to stand. God used five women to make a difference. The law books were changed because of their boldness and their courageousness and their timing. To come before Moses, Eliezer, the priests, the princes, and all the congregation. You know why they stood before all the congregation? Because of accountability. To make sure that we are all sisters in this journey together that we love the Lord with all our heart, mind, and soul, but we treat each other like we are of the Lord. As the doors of the church are open, and the pastor's gonna come and invite you to this time of Christian discipleship that you might strengthen your walk with the Lord. Amen. Come on, can you do me a favor and can you give God praise for this word by our preacher, Dr. Susan Johnson Cook. Thank you so much, my sister. Thank you so much. Uh, she is my sister, beloved. We've been knowing each other for almost 30 years. Uh, 30 years. She saw me when I was a younger preacher. And, and um, uh, she was the big sister that so many of us looked up to. And especially when she became president of Hampton, uh, we were so godly proud. She. One thing I forgot to mention, that she was part of the original Proctor Fellows. And uh, anybody that knows anything about those that pursued the doctoral degree at United, she was the only female in that group with like the likes of uh, Charles Booth and Otis Moss Jr. and Bishop Frank Reed and Bishop Daniel Hilliard. And I mean, she was the only one and the youngest. And so, um, uh, the Lord has done wonderful, marvelous things with her. And what a word for today. Uh, sisters, did she bless you? I know she blessed me. I want to t take this time real quick that while um, this word is marinating in your spirit, I want to invite you right now to join me in a prayer. A prayer of a new life, prayer of a brand new start. We're receiving persons to be part of our congregation virtually, digitally. Our social media influencers and our digital ministers are online ready to help you to understand what your next steps will be. So if you're watching us across the width and breadth of this land, and as we pray this prayer, if this prayer is meant for you, I'm going to let you know what the next steps are to uh, move forward as far as a new life in our God. Let's bow our heads, and if you would, repeat after me. Lord, I thank you that it's my turn is my time. And God, I can't do that unless you're in my life. I believe you sent Jesus to die for my sins. I believe he died on a cross. I believe you raised him from the dead. And I believe 
one day he's coming back. But until then, send your Holy Spirit into my life. Forgive me of all my sins. Help me be the person you want me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to do me this favor. If you're in the house right now, if you're watching us live stream, if you're in the house right now, if that prayer was meant for you, you want to walk with God, I don't want to take for granted that everyone here has a relationship with God. If you're here right now in the house, I want to invite you to come down if that prayer was meant for you. If you're watching us online, if you're on line watching us on YouTube, email at connect at spbcnc.org. On Facebook, type in salvation in the chat box. One of our digital ministers will reach out to you and let you know what the next steps are. If you're on the website, type in salvation. And one of our digital ministers will let you know what the next steps are. If you're listening to us on the telephone, you can email us at connect at spbcnc.org. Or call the church office at 704-334-5309. Leave your name and your phone number. You can join us as a candidate for baptism. If you are listening to us, you're saying, hey, pastor, I'm already saved. I know who Jesus Christ is in the pardon of my sin. But I would love to make St. Paul my church. I would love to be your pastor. These men and women would love to be your brothers and sisters in Christ. If you want to make your tribe St. Paul, we would love for you to do that. So do me a favor. If you want to join us by Christian Experience, email us at connect at spbcnc.org. Or you can type in connect if you're on Facebook or YouTube or the website, rather. Or if you're listening to us on the telephone, email us at connect at spbcnc.org or call the church at 704-334-5309. And we'll let you know what the next steps are. Someone will reach out to you by 5 o'clock tomorrow to let you know what you need to do. We would love for you to be a part of our church. So go ahead and move right now. Go ahead and do those chat texts. We would love for you to make your connection with us so we could do life together. Amen, amen. I'm gonna ask that you would be seated at this time. We're about to leave. I'm gonna ask uh, Lady Peer if she will come and give closing remarks. And then after that, we're going to dismiss and uh, I will let you all know how we will flow as far as this dismissal is concerned. If you will, put your hands together as Pierre comes to share. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor, and thank you um, all for being here. And thank you. Uh, I'm glad that it is my time and it's my turn. This is our exodus and we coming on out. <laughs> Praise God, ladies. Praise God. Um, just want to uh, say a blessed thank you. Thank you for that word, Dr. Suje. Um, you know, the AKAs might have their, their girl in the White House, but we got our sister in the church house, and we're glad about that. The Delta's everywhere. Wave your hands, wave your hands. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to Tiffany, to all the ladies who are were, worked so diligently to plan this weekend. It was just fabulous. It was digital, it was virtual, but it was wonderful. And so thank you all for all the hard work that you put into it. And we look forward next year to being in, um, in person. God say the same. I just want to give one little commercial. If you have not um, joined us for, for a while, the Women of Worth meet every first Saturday from 9 to 11 a.m. We're on Zoom, so you don't even, like Dr. Sujay said, you can just be fabulous from the waist up and do whatever you want from the waist down. So please join us. Our next meeting will be on um, June 5th. And we just thank you all so much for being in the house today. Thank you again, sister, for that awesome word. And let's um, praise God as we get ready for the benediction. Amen. All right. Now, I know we want to hug each other. We want to greet each other. We want to share with each other, but we can't do that right now. So I'm going to ask that as soon as the benediction is over, y'all smile through the mask and make your way out. <laughs> Amen. As, as you know, we, we don't want a lot of lingering. Um, uh, Roosevelt or Jody may come and start flicking lights to let you all know we need to go, amen. 
and, 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 and here's the thing. Again, it's all about safety and, and, and being cautious right now. Um, and, and we know that many of y'all have been vaccinated, but some of us may not have been. So we want to be cognizant of that. So if we could um, do that. Let me just check one thing. Where is Deb? Is Deb back there? Are we doing any, are we doing any book signing or are we just? Oh, the books are already signed. So the books are already signed. Um, how are they going to get them? All right, she'll be downstairs in the vestibule uh, to get the books uh, if you want to get uh, a book. And uh, we're taking the square. Am I correct? All right. Uh, I don't want to put Dr. Susan Johnson Cook at risk. We were the first trip she has made since the pandemic to come and share. So thank you. Thank you. You humble us and you honor us. And so thank you so very, very much. Thank you so very, very much. All right, let's go ahead and let's stand. Can we give a round of applause for our women ensemble? Y'all were absolutely incredible today. Thank you all so very, very much. Scott, you, you knocked it out the park again. To our musicians, thank you all so very much. Our ushers, thank you. Our media team, thank you so very, very much. All heads bow. God, we come and we thank you for wowing us. Thank you for the leadership of WOW, Sister Tiffany Hargrave and her team. Thank you for the preaching of Dr. Susan Johnson Cook and how she reminded to take that which belongs to us because we're your sons and daughters. Now, God, as we leave from this space and this place, but never from your presence, keep us in your sovereign care until we're able to come back together again and worship you in spirit and in truth. Now to him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with all exceeding joy. To the wise God, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forevermore. And the people of God said what? Amen. Listen, I love you. God loves you even more. It's great to see you all. We will be back in here soon. We will be back in here soon. But until then, continue to wash your hands, wear your mask, amen, and continue to practice physical distancing.